The Romantic Flight of Hugh O'Neill and Mabel Bagnall. The name William Warren is not one which you're likely to encounter in the standard Irish history book. Nobody of that name ever laid claim to glorious posterity. No streets were ever named after him, and he never made it into the lines of a poem or a song. But sometimes it's enough to be in the right place at the right time, or to know somebody else who might be famous. And that's how a William Warren played a small but significant role in the history of the little village of Lusk in North County Dublin. He is remembered for his part in an incident which occurred at the former Turvey House, which turned into Turvey House Golf Club and which eventually uh, now stands in ruins. In 1591, it was here that Hugh O'Neill, the Earl of Tyrone and a famous Irish rebel, absconded with his wife-to-be and rode to Drumcondra in County Dublin where they were married before anyone could stop them. Hugh O'Neill was a frequent visitor to Dublin as a member of Queen Elizabeth's council there. Although he had been brought up at the Royal Court in England and on first name terms with members of the Royal Family, nevertheless he harboured secret nationalist leanings. One man who distrusted him intensely and who eventually was to die on the field of battle against him was Henry Bagnall. The two men clashed regularly in the council chamber in Dublin Castle. Henry Bagnall was convinced, rightly in the end, that O'Neill was a traitor to the crown to which he swore allegiance. So when Hugh O'Neill met and fell in love with Henry Bagnall's sister, Mabel, it was more than Bagnall could stand. He refused to allow the marriage and he moved Mabel for safekeeping to Turvey House, where another sister of his was married to Patrick Barnwell. The Barnwells, they were a wealthy Anglo-Norman family, but unfortunately for Henry, they too had nationalist sympathies. They were in sympathy with Mabel and they were quite friendly with Hugh O'Neill. On the evening of the 3rd of August 1591, Patrick Barnwell held one of his regular dinner parties with Hugh O'Neill as one of the guests. Mabel was also in attendance. While O'Neill was regaling all and sundry with his tales of the English court, Mabel quietly slipped up, out, slipped up from the table and left the room. O'Neill apparently took no notice, which surprised some of the more observant ladies on the evening as rumours of the love affair between the two were one of the main topics of conversation at the time. What they did not discover until later in the evening was that our aforementioned William Warren, another friend of Hugh O'Neill, was waiting outside under the stars, a safe distance from the house, with a horse saddled and waiting. Mabel slipped out of the house unnoticed, proving the old adage that love laughs at locksmiths. William Warren mounted the horse, and with the help of a second man whose name history has forgotten, Mabel was lifted into the saddle behind him. And like thieves in the night, they galloped off towards Drumcondra. Inside Turvey House, Hugh O'Neill kept the party going, and attention diverted long enough to give the pair a good head start. Then in a quiet moment, he slipped out himself, and he galloped off after them. By the time the alarm was raised, it was too late. It was said that Patrick Barnwell and a group of riders went in pursuit, but more to be able to tell Henry Bagnall how they had at least tried to guard his sister than actually tried to catch her. Whatever the truth behind the pursuit, it was all of no avail because Hugh and Mabel reached Drumcondra and they got married before anyone could reach the scene with authority to forbid the bans. Subsequently, Bagnall did everything in his power to have the marriage annulled, but all his efforts failed and true love won out on the night.